Hey guys, Jeff here. I know this looks different. We're in Whitefish, Montana in a hotel room on my book tour for It's Not What You Think. Super exciting. It's been going really amazing. I'm going to show you how and tell you how to get this for free on Audible at the end. But that is not what the video is about. The video is about dating. We want to make another dating video because this topic has been in our mind, been in our hearts for a while. And really, it's not even like a question. It's basically just an encouragement or a challenge. And that is to not settle. I think so many times, is that kind of what you'd call what we're about to talk about? Yeah. Okay, to, to, to not settle. <laughs> I think so many times we see high school, young adult, college, maybe even older than that or younger than that, of people dating and kind of justifying their boyfriend or girlfriend even though they really know deep down that's not the right person for them. It leads to damage, hurt, and a lot of bad things. And so we just really want to encourage you guys when you're dating, you don't have to settle. God has his best for you. It might be the long route sometimes. It might be uh, waiting and him teaching you in that waiting. But God has his best for you, so don't settle for something mediocre because really you can trust him. And marriage is so serious. That's what I think it is. We get into these relationships because we just want, because we're created for that. We're created for intimacy and for love and romance and um, all these different things and relationships. So we get into that because we know it's a good thing, but, uh, but uh, you know, go for the 10, not the 7, right? And in regards to, uh, the intimacy, right, for what God's best is for you. And so I have a few things to say kind of after that or how to look out for that, but I'd lo love if you want to kind of just chime in because I know you feel strongly about this topic as well. Oh, but you're going to go first. Well, I just do it a little bit. Okay, so I guess I'm going to... Wait, wait, uh, I'll add more. See, I knew, I knew it. But I, just take I read a laugh mind. before I read a mind. <laughs> um, I think it's like dating is a great thing and mm -hmm. a lot of times we jump into it like because you're getting to know the person yep. and you're wanting to see if you want to spend the rest of your life with yep. them or like man, this guy's pursuing me really great. I want to see what it's like. Yes. And we get into it, and then um, two years go by, and you're still with the same guy or the same girl. Mm -hmm. But you've known then, a year ago that maybe that's not the right person. Yeah, you know it's not the right person, but you're you're like, wow, I've mm -hmm. been in this for two years. I'm not going to get out now because look at all the time I've invested. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the problem is that the dating part and the starting off, that's great. Like, that's yep. good. Yep. But knowing when to cut it off and, mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> before it gets more hearts get involved and it yes. gets more serious yes. and more intimate and yep. it becomes harder to break it off eventually. Yeah, exactly. And so just to kind of uh, piggyback on that for a few things. One, never choose a relationship just simply because you don't want to start over and you've been with that person for a long time. That's a really bad reason to be in a relationship because in the long term, even if you've been with that person for two years, you you know, arguably probably have 60, 70 years ahead of you and that's not the thing to frame your marriage around. It's what's God's best for me, who's the best kind of teammate uh, in this covenant relationship that I want to be with. Not, oh, I've been with them for two years, so I don't want to start over, so I'm going to stay with them. Yeah, or yeah. longer, three years, four years, seven years, whatever it is. So, mm -hmm. but, but just know that's a really bad reason to stay in a relationship. Um, there's that reason. But also on the flip side, what we're not saying, and I'll make sure saying this, like, don't, you don't have to find someone perfect. No one's perfect, right? right. And I, I think... There's going to be things that you don't exactly, always but, like about the other person, but not red flag. Exactly. And I've usually seen in relationships, people just kind of know. It's hard to tangibly put the, 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 um, the idea tangibly, meaning like you know exactly what it is, but I know nine times out of ten, most people I meet with, you meet with, just know. They just know like, ah, oh, this person's kind of pulling me down or pulling me sideways or not the best. And uh, if there is red flags, that's certainly a very tangible thing saying, you know, no. But what I mean by that is that they don't have to be perfect. I um, mean, I think I, with guys specifically, so girls, dating guys, I've heard uh, a pastor say, you know, um, there's a lot of nice Christian boys, but there's not a lot of godly men. And that's an interesting way to think about that's it. That's really good. You know, that there's, I know, it's not mine, but you know, um, <laughs> that's an interesting way to think about it, right? That there's a, a lot of people that kind of know the game and know what to say, right? But when you really get into it, that they just are all about love and sacrifice and serving you and they're making an amazing husband and father. They won't be perfect. They have sin. They have failures. But usually a girl I've seen can usually divide that too and say, yeah, I know mm -hmm. what the difference is, is that. And then last thing for that, I'll say barometer wise, if you want to know if you're probably in a relationship that you're settling, ask yourself if you ever do this scenario. You say, you say, you start thinking or even talking with a friend about kind of all the things that you don't really like about that person and not just like, you know, in peculiarities, but I mean things that make the relationship harder and make it not that healthy. And so you start kind of complaining or, or talking about that with your friend or even to yourself and then you start naturally saying, well, I don't really like this, I don't really like this, or this is really hard and I don't know if this will, you know, carry over into marriage. And you start doing that and then you naturally say, but uh, he's great or but he's nice or but it's just like I just see a lot of people do the self-justification thing where they start naming the reasons and then they kind of hear them themselves talking and they realize like, ooh, that doesn't sound good. Why am I dating this person? So then they kind of overcompensate. So if you ever do that, da 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 but that's probably, again, another sign that they're probably not God's best for you because they might be a great person. You know, that, that's not like the person's yeah. evil or anything. That, that might be great, yeah. but it's not God's best for you. And so you'll get into a situation if it's God's best for you where you say, 
man, this is maybe where we'll clash in marriage. This is maybe where it'll be hard. But, uh, man, this is God's best for me. This is exactly who I think God wants for me. And you can trust him in that. So I don't know. What, what else would you say to that? What's one last encouragement you give to everyone brilliant. out there? I just and now it just went out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this is what I was going to say. <laughs> I think um, a lot of the times, too, what we talked about is you can be with someone for a long time and you mm-hmm. don't want to break up with them mm-hmm. because, wow, you've invested so much time into yeah. that relationship and you are like best friends and yeah. you do love them. Yeah. Um, but maybe... I mean, yeah, that stuff's I, I real too. I believe that you yeah, love yeah. them, mm-hmm. but they're, you know, they may, you know, in your heart, they're not the best. They're mm-hmm. not who God wants you to be with. There, there's some red flags. There's mm-hmm. some things that need to change. Um, and so, but I think we stay in the relationship because, man, we don't want to start over. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you really love this person. Mm-hmm. And I think that. But do you really trust God to write your story? <laughs> One, do you really yeah. trust God? Mm-hmm. And two, like. <clears throat> um, you by you saying yes to this relationship, you're saying no to maybe the one that God really has for you. That is true. And because like, if God does have His best for you, that means sticking onto a relationship that's not means that that you know you're almost you're, you're kind of getting in the way of what God wants to orchestrate for you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I know that's, that's a nug. <laughs> tweet that nug. And I know that's really hard because man, that takes a whole lot of faith and it does. a whole lot it of does. trust in God that He. Um, has a plan for you and it yeah. is best and it's better than what you have now and I mean it is so hard to say goodbye to someone and there mm-hmm. will be a grieving process because you were close to them and it was your best friend and you love them but knowing that mm-hmm. there's something better yep. for not only for you but for him or her also you know because mm-hmm. you're if you know this isn't the best thing then you're also keeping them that's true from their best yep <laughs> and, and this isn't always true but I, and we talked about this in previous videos breakups can sometimes be exactly what god wanted uh because they can be so hard that's usually sometimes what it takes for god to get into the center of our soul and kind of really where we can face up with uh real big things we need to grow in real hard things that we need to wrestle with identity uh all these different things and so sometimes that is what he wants because i know me and you personally some of our biggest growth in our individual lives has been in both of our breakups or our breakups in the past and so um again it's, that's not trusting that god is his best for you and i know for me i've never felt closer to God than in those moments where it was really hard through a breakup or whatever it is. And so just know, we want to encourage you guys with this video, um, wherever you're at, God loves you, he sees you, he knows you, and he has something for you. Uh, even if it's a, a singleness, I know people struggle out there with that as well, where they feel like, man, I don't even, uh, I, hold on, is what I'm trying to say. God has his best for you. Continue trusting, leaning in, and don't miss the present. Don't ever miss the present. What's God trying to teach me and show me right now? How can I learn more trust and obedience and surrender and faith right now? And I think um, just really seeking the Lord, getting away with him, and mm-hmm. asking, man, what do you want me to do, Lord? What's the best? Because you usually get that nudge me, as well. Yeah, you'll you get, get that, that nudge of like, when you're oh, by yeah. yourself, you Yeah, know. like I just knew with Alyssa. Like I didn't, God didn't show up in the middle of the sky and say, boom, marry Alyssa, mm-hmm. you know, even though it would have been awesome. Uh-huh. But like when I prayed about it, I just knew like this yeah. is God's best for me. Or with other people we dated, we knew that that, that wasn't, wasn't the best. Exactly. And so then really asking the Lord for courage mm-hmm. and to be brave to do what he's calling you to do yeah. and to know that he's going to bless that. Yeah. So much blessing is in that. Yeah, because it is really hard. We don't want to make sure it's not, you don't hear us say that's really hard. I um, mean, you can love that person. Um, but God has something better for you. Trust that. Really lean into that. And man, he can take you places that you can't even imagine. So that's all we got. You got anything else? No, that's it. That's all we got. Coming from Whitefish, Montana. Prettiest <laughs> place on earth. No, no, just joking. Hey, we love you guys. You guys are awesome. Peace. Hey guys, we love you guys so much and I want to tell you guys about something really awesome. You can get my new book totally free, completely free audiobook, audible.com slash Jeff. You get one free month, one free book. So you can pick any book you want, but I ain't going to be mad if you pick my book, you feel me? <laughs> but it's on there now. I read it myself. I tried to do my best Morgan Freeman impersonation. Just joking. Audible.com slash Jeff, 150,000 titles. Mine's on there. Any book is on there. Free month, free trial, free book, and they have the best customer service. If you don't like it, you say, give me a new one. They will for free. You say, I don't like the trial. They say, okay, whatever. They're the best. Audible.com slash Jeff. Check it out. We love you guys. That's all we got. Hit them. Hey. <laughs> Peace.